Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Wrestling Nerdcast on the Angry Marks Podcast Network with your host, Will Huckabee and Mika Villas. And welcome once again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you once again, Miss Crystal, for the awesome introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 2018. This is the second podcast of the year. Once again, welcome to the Wrestling Nerdcast. I am your host, the AIWF World Heavyweight Champion, the AIWF Mega Heavyweight Champion, the IWA North Carolina Champion, and the World Wrestling Grand Prix Champion. I am the disrespectful intellectual, the Southern Gentleman, the Morning Star, the Mid-Atlantic Bully, the Incredible Huck, Will Huckabee. And as usual, I'm here with my co-host. She is the lover of waffles. She is the voice of the speech impediment. She is the, what is it, the adulator of affection, the abandonment of entertainment. She is one half of the world's cutest commentary team, which means you can catch her at any and all Atlanta wrestling entertainment shows and down there, Mucha Lucha Atlanta. And every once in a while, if you're lucky, you might catch her at another independent wrestling show. She is my co-host. She is the lover of waffles, like I said before. Ah, my homie, Mrs. Hashtag, what that mouth do, Mika Villas. What's going on, girl? (laughs) How is it possible that I like you and hate you all at the same time? I I just, I don't understand. It's it's part of my charm, you know. Your your charm is like a, a snake. It's like, ooh, pretty, until they bite you and you need the poison sucked out and not in a good way. Mm, watch uh-huh. yourself. <laughs> Try to blow our ratings already. As usual, ladies and gentlemen, this show is brought to you by our sponsors, Indie Customs. Be sure to follow them on Facebook, Indie Customs. Follow them on Twitter at Indie Customs. Also, huge shout out to our friends at Pro Wrestling World. Check them out on Facebook for all of like your cool wrestling news. Uh, be sure to give them a like as well. Oh. And if you have it by now, you should definitely go on our YouTube page, look for the Wrestling Nerdcast, check out an interview that me and Mika did with UIW uh, heavyweight champion Adrian Armour. Check it out. Had actually had like a special guest, you know, uh, a, a run-in, as you will, with former guest and friend of the show, Murder One. So be sure to check that out. Like the video. Subscribe. Help us out. Anyway, Mika, how was your weekend? You know, I kind of know how your weekend went. But tell our fans and listeners. You remember how my weekend went? Because Lord knows I don't remember how my weekend went. What the hell did I do this weekend? Um, I think I was sober, but, you know, who knows? Um, actually, it was pretty good. I, I had five days off in a row from work. So you know what that means. Lots and lots of uh, shenanigans, wrestling-related shenanigans. Um, I went to a couple of different shows. I went to a new show uh, a new show for me, um, APW, Alternative Pro Wrestling, in Royston, Georgia. Uh, I checked that show out. It was uh, pretty interesting, pretty cool. Um, I, I liked the venue. It was, um, I gosh, I want to say an old armory or something, but the they had old posters, old wrestling posters. I saw, um, like, literally, truly vintage posters that had, like, oh, my God, give me somebody Southern that be... I can't think right now. Uh, K. Quick. No. Ron the Truth Quillings. Ron the Truth no. Quillings. No, AJ no. Like, no, sorry, sorry. gosh. I'm Quillings. talking like, okay, let's not talk. Um, Here we go. Okay, anyway, vintage posters on the wall. Nice, nice show. Um, it was cold in, outside, but the crowd was trying to keep it hot. Saw some um, some new talent. Saw some older talent there. So I might make the trip back out there to APW Royston. Um I don't know what else I did. I really, truly don't remember. I, of course, was at WWA4 for their show. Checked it out on a Thursday night. The uh, best and brightest there under the tutelage of AR Fox. Those kids put on a, a show um, every Thursday, free show. You cannot beat the price. And honestly and truly, the action is phenomenal. So that was great. And Lord, help me. Either I'm getting old or I'm drinking way too much of these shows. And let's not say that I'm drinking too much because I want people to continue to buy me alcohol while I'm out and about. Um, so we'll just call it older. Um, I don't know. I can't think. You, you, 
I kept in contact with you. You're like my phone a friend if I get too crazy. So you you know all about what I do, which is another scary thing in itself. Well, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm like your accountability partner on the weekends. Um, but no, it was at UIW. At UIW. Oh yeah. Had had a great show. Uh, had a great match with Simon Sermon. I really enjoyed it. So for the fact that you know he tried to take my cookies. Um. Other than that, you know, like Simon Sermon is a genius. I love Simon Sermon because he knows who he is as a person. He knows who he is as a person, who is as a wrestling personality. Um, so my recommendation is anybody, you know, Simon Sermon, he's, who actually agreed to be like on the show in the upcoming future and stuff. Um, but if, if none of our fans and listeners know who Simon Sermon is, like, I'm going to give you a brief synopsis. He was like, if I'm correct, and correct me if I'm wrong, Mika, he was like the first openly gay professional wrestler, uh, especially here in the United States. Um, he's now had, you can now catch him on like, this court TV show and stuff. But we're going to hear about all of that when he actually comes onto the show. But what did you think about my match, Mika? Your your match was very, very... You want to talk about a contrast of styles. Here you are, this this huge, hulking, pun intended, individual who's just the epitome of masculinity. I put you over. Oh, God, I must be drunk. Versus Simon Sermon. Simon comes out and he is extremely from the get go, from the look of him, flamboyant. I'm talking about he had the glitter lipstick that I had to stop him after the show and go, how the hell? Where'd you get that glitter lipstick from? Because it was wondrous. Um, Glitter lipstick, um, eyeliner, makeup, the full nine. He had on this. I think his outfit was pink that night with kind of garters and just clearly, clearly, clearly the opposite of you um so and for that crowd this is a southern crowd this was a a show fan appreciation night uiw had a great turnout and um this is deep south this is deep south in georgia to watch that man come out in his glittery lipstick and makeup and have that crowd in the palm of his hand was a magic trick i was not expecting I'm going to tell you the truth. I was really jealous of his entrance music. <laughs> like, I was super jealous. I was like, man. And not only that, but, like, they blasted his entrance music, and then I could barely hear mine. Like, mine was really, really low, but his was, like, full-on blast. And just to, for all of you listeners and fans, like, just some highlights of the matches. A, he grabbed my butt several times. Um B, some old lady in the crowd actually pulled her teeth out and, like, offered them to me. You know, like, I made a joke about her not having a bunch of teeth left. And she was like, here, I was like, I'll knock all of her teeth out. And she's like, here, you don't got to knock them out. You can just have them. And she pulls her teeth out, like, top and bottom, just like, bam. And I'm just like, the most unhygienical thing I've ever seen. <laughs> ah. So but it was funny. It was, it was funny, and it was a, it was hilarious, and it was appropriate. Simon grabbing your butt several times, and 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 also other body parts he seemed to be after. Again, for that crowd, I would expect them to be on your side. That crowd was fully behind Simon. I, I myself was behind Simon just because I like seeing you run like a little girl. It was pretty awesome. So, not funny, not funny. Uh, speaking of. Not funny. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new segment for the show tonight. Um, because as we know, you know, Mika Villas, she likes to talk. She talk, likes to talk so much that we decided to give her her own little part of the show so she can talk about anything and everything that's inside the mind of Mika Villas. I don't know what we're going to call it yet, Mika. Should, should we call it like Mika's Corner? Or I don't know. It has to be, I guess it has to start with like a double M, like Mika's Magnificent mind or, or inside the mind of magnificent mika villas there we go so ladies and gentlemen for the first time ever we are going to go inside the mind or inside the magnificent mind of mika villas oh my gosh like okay so i didn't know we were going to run into my head because there's a lot of stuff in my head but i'll tell you about a lot of stuff that i, I just came across on twitter that just things that interest me, things that were, you know, kind of standing out in the, the independent wrestling news world, so to speak. One thing that just kind of made me laugh and chuckle, but kind of gave me pause, was the fact that Hurricane Helms and Mia Khalifa, or whatever this chick's name is, there's still kind of a, a, a story, a beef there, so to speak. So if you don't know who Hurricane is, stand back. Um, and how dare you not know who the best cruiserweight champion is ever was sorry anybody who's about to or holding the belt right now but 
Um, Mia Khalifa is a porn star who is now doing, I don't know, sports analysts or something. I don't know. She likes putting mics by her mouth and she talks. I don't know. Anyway, she called wrestling fake and Hurricane Helms kind of said, hey, you know, we put our bodies on the line and so does she. You know, basically he called her uh, a whore in the nicest way possible. Well, Mia Khalifa got invited to a show. Um Sabotage Pro Wrestling is putting on a show January 19th in Texas, and Thunder Rosa, who plays Cobra Moon on Lucha Underground, invited Mia to come and see that wrestling is not fake to see something outside of the WWE. Well, Hurricane Helms got on Twitter and he said, didn't I already body this chick? You know, why is she still a thing? And why would some indie talent try to use her to, uh, you know, get ahead and put themselves over? So, uh, Thunder Rosa again, Cobra Moon, Lucha Underground, she's more than just some indie talent. She's on a, you know, worldwide television program that's in, you know, syndication or whatever. So, they kind of went back and forth on Twitter, but apparently this porn star, sports analyst, Mike Holder, will be at wrestling on January 19th in Texas. The hope for me and all of our wrestling fans, I'm sure, is that somebody just puts her on her ass and I don't mean backstage in a locker room. I mean, like, literally knocks her on her ass. <laughs> but, 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 sorry, sorry. Um, moving moving on to just something that kind of put somebody on their ass or at least gave pause. There is a little, uh, a little unsettlement um, in the, the wrestling world. CWF Mid-Atlantic has parted ways um, with a figure there currently um, who was their booker. Um, and I'm not going to get into all the the details because there's lots of rumors and innuendos swirling around. But pretty much right now, um, PWI Insider Mike, whatever his name is, y'all know who I'm talking about here. He reported that Brad Stutz is parted ways with CWF. That also has opened up the doors for a lot of other places to say he's not with us. He's not on our bus, y'all. Um, CWF Mid-Atlantic put out a statement. Nova Pro has removed him and said that he's not playing with them anymore, as well as Modern Vintage Wrestling. MVW is owned, operated by a gentleman named Charlie Armstrong, and that guy from PWI, he reported that Charlie and um, Stutzy were kind of in this whole inappropriate behavior deal together. But the problem with that is not so much inappropriate behavior, it's about the reporting of the issue. When PWI insider Mike Yaya, when he reported this on his Twitter, he tagged the wrong person. He didn't tag Charlie Armstrong. He tagged Chip Day. Which blew Chip. my mind for the record. <laughs> yes. So Chip Day, the Kennesaw kick machine, the current reigning Georgia wrestling crown champion, has been fending off these allegations of things that he didn't do inappropriately all well, for the past 24 hours or so. Well, hold on. Well, hold on because the dude at PWI Insider actually made a retraction and, and said that it was not Chip Day, that it was Charlie Armstrong. So let's go ahead and give the guy his credit for I realizing he made a mistake. I was going to give him his credit, but also understand that when monkey see, monkey do, guys, be careful out there because with him being such a leader in these entertainment sports entertainment wrestling world giving a lot of news a lot of people picked up on that story and did not retract until much much later that it was not chip day out there doing inappropriate things this is not the first time chip day's name has been out there controversial for doing something that he didn't do so again chip day is a good guy y'all please stop I don't, know. I, don't, I don't know why they always pick on Chip. I don't know. Uh, like, I guess it's because Chip Day is such an easy name to remember. I, I, I Apparently, they've never been kicked by Chip. But when you trigger this kid, I'm just saying, I don't want to see him kick people's ass for real. But it looks like it's going to have to come to that point. So well, hopefully I, people, you know. I, I will say about the situation and stuff, uh, because I live in North Carolina. Uh, I, I broke, I made my bones, whatever you want to call it, uh, in North Carolina indie wrestling. Um, and CWF Mid Atlantic is what, is what I like to consider one of the big three in North Carolina. There's PWX, uh, there's AML, and then there's CWF Mid Atlantic. And a lot of guys that you see on WWE, on TNA, uh, on Lucha Underground and PWG and all these bigger super indie companies and stuff, they all either started at uh, CWF Mid-Atlantic or, you know, they performed there in some kind of way. 
um, you know, Cedric Alexander, Trevor Lee, Andrew Everett, um, the list goes on and on. Tessa Blanchard, you know, the list goes on and on of great wrestlers from North Carolina. Oh, the Revival also wrestled. Yeah, Caleb C- Conley. Caleb Conley, you know, so, uh, kudos for CWF, in my opinion, for trying to make sure that, you know, they kind of separate themselves. Uh, you know, I try to keep it positive on this podcast. So, whether, no matter what the allegations are, whether they're true or not, in my opinion, I don't know how you feel, Mika. Uh, I wish the best of luck to Stutzy because he was a very influential guy, uh, in the North Carolina wrestling scene and stuff. And so, uh, Contrary to what a lot of people say, his presence on the North Carolina indie scene is definitely going to be missed. That's the same as, no lie, that's the same as if, you know, Bill Barron, something happened and Bill Barron's, um, could no longer be involved with professional wrestling in Georgia. You know what I'm saying? So, that's, that's just how it is in my opinion. Again, it's, it's sad when there is any sort of black mark put against wrestling, any sort of doubt or allegations put against anybody who's in this business because the guys and girls, you guys do so much. You are out there so hard hustling. And when you have something that comes to light that is so negative, it pulls away from all the positive that anybody's doing. So true, not true. It's a good thing for everybody to just kind of, Get it out there and move on because there's a lot more work to be done. Speaking of work to be done, my last thing that's on my mind that I'm really excited about, um, Impact. Impact Wrestling is doing a little tapings right now, and there might be an undead bloody bride showing up at the Impact tapings this week, guys. So Say it ain't so. Sue it ain't so. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. We'll have to keep stay tuned to Impact to find out. Maybe it ain't Sue. <laughs> uh, with that being said, stay positive, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a great, great, great guest for you tonight. And we'll do all the introduction and stuff right after these messages. Indie Custom sponsored athlete Amber Young works with her local YMCA and A Place to Dream building beds for children in low-income families. A Place to Dream is a program that the family YMCA of Greater Augusta is doing. The CSRA has many wonderful social services agencies helping low-income families obtain housing, but few help these families turn their housing into functional homes. Consequently, residents are forced to sleep on the floor, air mattresses, sofas are crowded into a bed with other family members. Recent studies link poor sleep with cognitive, physical, and even behavioral health issues. People who do not get enough quality sleep have poor concentration, weaker immune systems, and increased risk of obesity, diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease. Research has found that children with proper bedding sleep an average of 20 minutes more each night than children who have unfavorable sleeping arrangements. That's more than two hours per week. The family YMCA staff and volunteers are going into these low-income housing authorities and building the beds, making the beds, and just getting to know the families, all for the children. We currently have done three different days and delivered over 120 plus beds for the children. Please remember, shirts are only $20 and all proceeds will go to A Place to Dream. Make sure to send your payments to www.paypal.me backslash Indie Customs. And remember to include your sizes and your addresses plus $3 for shipping. And thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're back with tonight's guest. His list of accomplishments, his list of titles, like just his list, period, is phenomenal. I'm going to try to hit the high spots, ladies and gentlemen, because uh, when I first met this guy like five, six years ago, completely and totally amazing. He is the former Anarchy Tag Team Champion, former Evolve Tag Team Champion, the former FIP, that's Full Impact Pro for those of y'all who don't know, heavyweight champion. Peach State Wrestling Alliance No Limits Champion, and last year he beat me in rankings for the Pro Wrestling Illustrated PWI Top 500. He is also the self-proclaimed master of Connect Four. He is the resurrector of wrestling. He is Lord Ambient. He is Bonafide Fred Yeha. What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on? You doing all right? I'm doing great, man. I'm doing great. Did, did, I, did I get did I get all the highlights? Uh, let's I, 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 Leave you covered them all, covered them all, uh, covered them all pretty much. Oh, oh, big trouble, big trouble. Yeah, we got about big trouble. Swap five oh, big- eggs. Yo, yeah. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't even going to mention the fact that you're saying that you may be the winner of Savage Moment of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't laugh. Don't laugh. 
that's just mean. That's so mean. Mika has an issue with that. We'll get to that later. But before we even talk about the savagery and stuff and your your great wrestling career, for and you haven't been in the business very long, let's talk about this whole Connect Four thing, man. I got to jump into it because that's what I want to talk about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> What's your Connect Four record? Oh, man. I, you know, sometimes you win so many, you just start to lose count. But the only thing I keep count on now is just the years that I've gone undefeated. And uh, so far, it's been about, about 15 years now. So I have not lost the next four game in 15 years. So the streak continues. The run-up, done-up series continues. I am the connector taker. That is my legacy. It will continue throughout. And, you know, many people claim, I'm going to be your Brock Lesnar. No, I'm not going to have a Brock Lesnar. No, I'm the connector taker. I, I don't know, man. I don't know, I play Connect Four with my daughter and stuff, man. And I ain't saying I'm vicious, but my daughter's pretty ill. My my living role is pretty ill at Connect Four, so you know, <laughs> I'm gonna have to run. I'm gonna have to make sure my daughter run up on you one of these days at the indie show with her own little personal Connect Four. Because I've heard rumors. I've heard rumors that you know what I'm saying that you you that you ain't playing with a uh, up and up deck. You know what I'm saying that you might have like some laced Connect Four pieces. <laughs> I mean, I can't. I can't. I can't tell you how many times I've had conversations like this where someone either says that, hey, I'm going to beat you, or they say they know someone who's going to beat you, whether it's, you know, wife, husband, a daughter, son, you know, whoever. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had. It always ends the same way. And, uh... I say you got a rule also, don't you? That once you beat somebody, it's only one game. They're only allowed one chance, and it's like what? One chance a year? One chance a year. One chance. A year. So have a have a long have a lineup, a list of people. That's a long list of people who are you know who claim they're waiting their turn, and you know you know they had to wait patiently, and so I'm gonna take them out as well as put some others on the list for next year. So so that's the <laughs> that's the draw. So well, you, yeah. You know, so- all right, so let's let's get to let's be more serious and stuff because you haven't barely been wrestling that long. Like, um, I remember when I first met you. I want to say about about five years ago, four or five years ago, down in Georgia, Platinum Championship Wrestling, um, with Stephen Platinum and Shane Marks, um, and 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 uh, and Jay and stuff, and. Like, you already had talent. You, you know, you was an accomplished amateur wrestler and stuff. Um, did you see, you know, yourself at the point that you're at now, five years ago? Um, Actually, yes. I mean, I couldn't really, like, pinpoint, like, the path that I would take. But, like, even before I got into, you know, the professional wrestling, it's always been something that I would, you know, I, I would daydream about it. It's something that I really, really uh, wanted to do. It, it was a matter of just doing it. So I did see myself, you know, uh, attaining like uh, a high level of success. I mean, in this year, like, I mean, where I am now, like, this is not, you know, I, there's still so much more that I want to go after, you know, like, I want to, uh, make, you know, you know have a, you know, an amazing, successful career. Uh, you know, I still want to go over to the UK. I still want to go over to Japan. Like, I want to, you know, wrestle on the biggest stage, you know, of, you know, WrestleMania, you, you know, you know, I want to do all those things, I, you know, so, like, I could I could see myself, you know, being successful, but I couldn't, you know, exactly pinpoint the path that I would take. Well, speaking of pinpointing the paths and stuff, I'm going to go ahead and pass it over to my to my tag partner, my co-host, Mika Villas. I know she's chomping at the bit to speak to you right now. She she lives in Georgia just like you do and stuff, and I'm pretty sure she's seen you on some shows. So, Mika, what do you have for our guest tonight? I, I have to go right into it, you know. I was there, I was in the audience, I was filming New Year's Day, and you, you did the dirty, the dirtiest thing I've ever seen a man do. And I've seen dudes do a lot of dirty stuff before. Uh, What? Okay, so if nobody's seen it, go online, Media Takeout has it. But during this match, you pull out this, you whip out this box. Tell me what your mindset was. How, how, how can you sleep at night doing that? That's what I want to know. Oh, there, there, there were so many thoughts going through my head, you know, when I did it. Uh, so many thoughts. Like, I knew it was, I knew it was wrong. And <laughs> but you did it anyway. I knew how, <laughs> I knew how, um, I knew how everyone was going to react. And then I knew that after the fact, I was going to have to, like, come up with something, like, ten times, <laughs> ten times better than, like, you know, just, than just, you know, generic proposal like i knew what I, I would have to like come with like you know my a plus 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 game you know for you know the day that i actually 
you know, do propose. So yeah, yeah. So it wasn't. It, it was a. It was a pretty uneasy feeling. Honestly, it was a pretty uneasy feeling to be real. Um, so yeah, but I do know that. Hey, you know, now when I actually do propose, uh, it's going to have to be ten times better. I'm going to have to really give it some thought. So. You, you're going to have to propose to her. I hope she says yes. And then you're going to have to like propose to the wrestling world to forgive you, at least the girls, because I know well, some of the boys too. Because there were some angry dudes, like, man, how could he do that? That was cool. Yeah, well, how could he do there that? Grown men. There were grown men in the crowd who were crying apparently, and uh, I did not go up to the lobby after that. I waited till like most of you know most of the crowd was gone, and you know then you know made my way out to the car. But yeah, there was some pretty hostile people out there. It was it was crazy. Man, I, I'm going to tell you what, I'm going to go there for a second because, Fred, I thought it was genius. I died laughing when I saw it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Mika was talking bad about you, though. You know what I'm saying? I was. Last week, she was talking bad, bad about you last show, and I was like, all the bad stuff you said about Fred, you better say on the show. I just said it. That was, that, I told you, after I was one of the people who stuck around after the show when I saw him. I couldn't even speak to him. I was still angry. This is me who I'm never angry. I just had to give him the finger wag of shame like, how dare you, sir? How dare you? That was just, that was evil. I don't think, listen, I don't know how you got home, but I know if I was her, you would have walked home the whole way. I'm sorry. There is no way in hell. Your stuff would have been on the couch for like a week at least. You'd still be sleeping on the couch right now. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. For every box that I saw, I'd have been like, damn you, Fred. I'm just saying, as a female, I'm telling you, if you didn't know you were wrong, you were wrong. I mean, you're an awesome wrestler. It was, it was cool. It was a great match. I mean, you didn't hold back, which I appreciated, and I'm sure people in attendance um, appreciate it. Outside of the, you know, pulling out the ring um, and doing that, was that you guys' first match together um, or against we, one another? We, it was, it was our first match in front of like an actual like crowd. Crowd. We, we did have a match at a Beyond taping like years ago. It was back in like 2014. I don't really even count that match honestly. I don't really count it because uh, at the time, Oz was only like a few months in. But um, but like. I would like to call like the one that we just had New Year's, like you know, the first match that we ever had, our first like encounter in the single. So yeah, yeah, it was it was awesome. You you were dominating that match, and I was like, holy crap! And then the whole ring thing happened, and yeah. I lost. So outside of you know swerving us there, and you know perhaps going on, I heard you say you want to go overseas. What do you want to do stateside that you have not got a chance to do yet? Because you're you're sort of everywhere. You're here in Georgia. You're you're all in the WWN Live Network, and I, I see you so many places. Where else do you want to conquer here in the states that you said, hey, you know what, this would be a good fit for me? In the states, I would like to get over to. Uh, I would like to get out west. PWG, that's one place. I would like to get out to uh, AIW. I'm trying to remember where AIW is exactly, but I know that's another, like, you know, it's another hotbed. Uh, I, want it's like, I want to say it's like Michigan or Minnesota. No, it's like Ohio. Ohio. AIW. Yeah, Ohio. Absolute Intense yeah. Wrestling is in Ohio, yeah. Okay. I would like to get out to uh, Absolute Intense Wrestling. I would like to get back to uh, AAW and do more work there. Uh, so, like, those are, like, my, it was, like, three main places. Um... I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind seeing some work within uh within Ring of Honor at some point. Um, <clears throat> of course, like of course, like WWE, like that's something else that I would that I would you know that I would love to do. But you know, before that, like you know, really just getting overseas to uh, places like Rev Pro, Rev Pro, and and Progress, or just getting over to the UK in general, uh, over to like WXW, you know, those, you know, places like that. And of course, like Japan would be awesome. So uh, it's just different places I would like to uh, venture out to first, you know, just for the uh, just for that experience and um and you know meeting new people and you know being in an environment where you know hey the the skill level is just at a whole different level. So yeah. <laughs> now uh, once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Wrestling Nerdcast with your hosts Will Huckabee and Mika Phyllis. Brought to you by Indie Customs. We're talking tonight with independent standout Fred Yeha. Uh, Fred, you just mentioned you want to go to WWE and stuff. And earlier last year, um, we saw you know you uh, in the 
the what was it the, the cruiserweight the WWE's cruiserweight classic uh, in a qualifying match and stuff. So we already know that you're on WWE's radar, and we've already heard rumors that you know you might be signing the contract pretty soon. Uh, in the response to that, uh, nothing at the moment. Uh, I. I did see the rumors, and I mean, you know, th- th- there's a lot of rumors and speculation, so it's stuff that I, that I can't really speak on. Like, I, I don't really have any knowledge as far as, like, what's going on with it. So, uh, you know, to me, like, you know, hey, rumors get out. I've seen it happen with several guys, and um, and just like what those other guys have done, you know, they ride the waves of that. You know, they you know they continue doing what they're doing. They continue on pushing, and that's just what I'm doing. I'm going to continue pushing and just continue doing what I'm doing. And, um... And then, you know, hopefully, like, the things that, you know, the desires in my heart will come to fruition. So, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty much that. <laughs> I, you know, man, I'm so glad you said that because uh, professional wrestling at times can be such a cutthroat business. And, and really, uh, let's just be honest, the majority of people that's involved in professional wrestling are a bunch of assholes and shady individuals. Um, and you are always positive. I've never ever heard anybody say anything bad about Fred Yeha, whether it was your work rate, whether it was your physique, whether it was your attitude, like nobody ever has anything bad to say about Fred Yeha. How do you have, how do you consistently stay so positive and so upbeat and, and even when you're in the middle of a match, man, you still have brief moments where you smile because you're just enjoying yourself. How do you stay so positive in a business full of shady, conniving people? <laughs> I really appreciate that. Thank you. Um, well, I mean, there's no, there's, there's no like step A, step B plan. Like, you know, uh, I am a Christian, like, you know, so I really, um, I really try to walk that out. And, um, you know, just in general, like, you know, just, you know, my upbringing, I was, I was brought up with, you know, you know, you know, just with, you know, respect, you know, just respecting people. Um, and, you know, you just treat people the way you want to be treated. You know, um, I don't have a reason to be uptight around anyone. Like, you know, so I don't mind, I don't mind smiling, like, I don't mind smiling, like, I like to have a good time, I like to enjoy myself, I like to laugh, but, uh, you know, but I just treat people the way that, you know, that I want to be treated, but there's no, there's no secret formula to it, you know, and I'm just being, you know, just who I am, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just being just who I am, and, uh, you know, a lot of that is just, you know, who God is molding me to be, you know, as I continue to, you know, walk it out, and no one's perfect, I'm not perfect, everyone has, everyone has things that they deal with, everyone has them. You know, so I'm I'm no exception. Like I still have things that I have to overcome. You know, things that you know people may not even know about unless I were to talk to you about it. But um, but yeah, other than that, in general, like within this business, I know there are some people in the business who are good people. Uh, and I do know people in the business who aren't the most likable. But you know, I still treat people the way that I would like to be treated, regardless. And you know, I don't try to dabble too much into uh. You know, into drama. I try to stay away from all the gossip and watch what I say. But well, I yeah, tell you what, I tell I you what, man. Look, I'm gonna tell you. Talk, talk about da- dabbling in gossiping, bro. I've seen on social media stuff your workouts, and like I pride myself. Even though I'm a fat kid, I got a couple of extra pounds around the waistline. I'm in really good shape. Like I've worked out with Joe Black and Cedric and all these other guys. Your workout uh, is crazy. Just that, for lack of a better phrase, like just ridiculous the things that you do for the workout on a regular basis. Um, is that just like how do you design your workouts? Um, a lot of times, like I go in and I just feel it. Like I, like I, I think about, I think about like you know, because I, you know, I wrestled in high school, wrestled in college, uh, and then of course, like doing the, you know, doing the wrestling thing. Now I think about you know what I do in the ring. Um, I think about all those things. You know, I think about, hey, you know, if I do, if I do X amount of reps of this, so I do this many things here, I know I'm going to feel blown up. So at this point, you know, I can do, you know, a few of these or, or, you know, more of these or whatnot. You know, when I, when I reach that point of feeling like, oh, I just can't go anymore, I can, like, I can throw these in. So I, you know, I take all those things in, a, you know, into account and, you know, I go off of that. Um, as of late, I've been doing like more of like a split training for the first time, you know, since I talked to, um, a few of the guys in the business who, you know, who have been, like, going that route as far as the bodybuilding, you know, so I'm doing split training now, which is also really, really challenging. So, I mean, it just, you know, it all depends. And, of course, I always, you know, I do my research, too. I look up different workouts, and I wing it, you know, I wing it on my own. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much, that's that's pretty much what Fred Yeha does. Like, <laughs> that's pretty much what I do. 
So, uh, uh, so you know, let's say a couple years down the line, are we going to see like the Fred Yeha workout plan? Um, <laughs> it's a possibility. It's a possibility. What Fred Yeha needs to work on is is is, is the diet. Is the dieting. I know, like, uh, one thing I'm guilty of is like not eating enough. So I know that's one thing I'm really, really guilty of. I know, like, in some in some ways, like. I set myself behind on that. Like I know that, hey, you know, my physique would be a lot better if I if I dieted more, if I if I just ate more. But I know that's one thing that I do need to work on. You know, is a is a, is a sound, well rounded diet plan uh, to you know complement the working out, <laughs> the workouts and stuff that I do. Now, you said Fred, the D word. Wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> uh, you, you said the D word, the diet word. So I have to go and 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 counteract that just a little bit. What's your cheat food? What is that that guilty pleasure food that Freddie yeah, has? Like, I know Asha likes pineapple pizza. What is your? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my my guilty pleasure is man. I love cake. <laughs> I love what? cake. I, but like, but I've what? gotten a lot better with it. Like I've gotten I've gotten so much better with it because once upon a time, like if I saw cake, if I saw like. Really, any kind of pastry, like especially those um those chocolate chip brownies at the gas station, like I just couldn't resist, and I just had to, I just had to take one. Um, but now I've gotten to the point over the, oh, you know, over the past year, um, that I won't just eat just any cake. Like I won't just eat the, you know, you know, you know, the cakes at the gas station or just a random slice of cake somewhere. Like I have to go to, I have to go out to like the Marietta Diner or like the Cheesecake Factory, you know. To get a nice like Andy. cake, or uh, or Aja's sister, or Aja's sister who is a phenomenal cook. She has to bake a cake, and I'm plugging her on the podcast. She's amazing. Uh, she has to bake a cake for me to eat a slice of cake. So like now I've gotten so much better, you know, with it. But that's like you know like that's I, I guess you could say that's like you know the the kryptonite of my diet aside from just not eating enough. <laughs> well, I'm gonna remember that if I ever if I ever end up in a match with Fred Yeha, I'm gonna pull out a slice of cheesecake factory cake and be like, "Hey, give me that take that ten count and you can have this cake." <laughs> like, so Fred, I, I know that you know you're a very busy man, and and our time with you is running short. So, uh, go ahead and let all of our fans and listeners and stuff know where they can catch you at in the upcoming weeks and how they can keep in contact with you on social media. All right, well, definitely. Uh, let's see, you can catch me this weekend at Evolve 98-99. I'll be in Queens, New York, uh, and New York City, I believe. I believe that's where the second show is supposed to be. I think Brooklyn, maybe. I don't know. Uh, but you can catch me this weekend on the WN Live Network. Uh, also, catch me, uh, watch my BHW channel on YouTube, BHW Wrestling. You can catch, like, videos on that every week. We pretty much upload. Uh, follow my... Twitter at Fred Yeha. Uh, also Facebook, Fred Yeha. I have a hate page and a like page. I have a I hate Fred Yeha hate page. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, oh, it's real. what? It's real. It's real. It's real. So I have two. Uh, <laughs> also, um, yeah, that's 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 those are pretty much my those are pretty much my plugs. Well, look, I'm going to go ahead you know, say, to try to help you get out of the doghouse. We're going to also plug your significant other, the the lowest lane to your Superman, Super Aja, you know what I'm saying, uh, one half of Team Spam with a friend of the get, a friend of the show, Ariel Monroe, doing huge, big things and stuff down there at Sean and, and the entire WWE Network as well. So, shouts out to Super Aja, you know what I'm saying? I love the outfit. Tell her I said hello. Oh, she's right here, right next to me. Hi. Uh, I, I have pineapple pizza for dinner today. Girl oh, power. Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Fred, Fred, once again, thank you for being the guest on the show, man. We hope to have you back on soon. Uh, hopefully, right before you know, you sign that WWE paperwork that we all know is coming within the near future and stuff. We can have you back on the show. All right. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, man. Y'all have a good night. Okay. Hey, take care. You all be blessed. Bye. So, Mika. I can't even with him. He has a hate page. I just went to it. It really is real. I mean, who in the world can hate Fred Yeha? I know, I know. I, I don't I don't understand. It it's 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 great. He is a really good guy. It was just um 
it was just really cool um, to hear him speak and to kind of get um, to get his take on the match and just in general. I mean, you are correct. It's hard to meet positive people in life. Um, and, and I know in this business, like you've been around for a while now, you know that there are just tons of, you know, like you said, snaky, shady people. And to meet somebody who's genuinely real, nice, and just, you know, uh, that's amazing. That's a rarity. And I love it. Uh, as much, you know, flack as I gave him for the whole ring thing, and the fact that I just followed the I Hate Fred Yeha page means nothing. I like Fred Yeha. He's amazing as a wrestler and as a person. I'm not going to play Connect Four with him, but if I see him out and I can get my hands on it, I might, like, go Uno on him and, like, you know, be undefeated for 800 years. Did, did you really just hate the I Hate Fred Yeha page? Or like no, the no. I-, I did. He said it was his page. <laughs> oh, fuck. How could you, oh, Jesus. Like I said, this dude's amazing. Like I said, I, I've known Fred almost as long as he's been in the business. And the funny thing, and I hope Fred listens to this interview, like he was supposed, I was supposed to have worked for BACW a couple years ago, and Fred never got back to me about that, which kind of hurt my feelings. You know what I'm saying? But after he hears this interview, hopefully Fred will go ahead and let me come down to work at BACW and stuff so I can get a match with Fred Yeha. Like, that'd be like the feather in my cap to say, you know, I actually survived the match with Fred Yeha at the age and the shape that I'm in right now. That would be a feather, all right, because, you know, the guy, is, he's, uh, he's a beast in the ring. I mean, I've seen him go, and it is amazing. Well, I remember my first time seeing him was at Evolve, and I was totally taken aback by his style, his intensity, and, yeah, he might kill you. I'm just... I, I like you. Don't, don't die. Don't don't say that. I'm anyway, just saying. anyway, anyway, Mika, what you got coming up this weekend? Well, this weekend I was searching high and low. Not really. There's a whole lot of damn wrestling this weekend. So much, in fact, that I am going to. Uh, um, I'm flipping a coin. This weekend is PWX in North Carolina. They are doing the X16 tournament. It's a two-day tournament and a lot, a lot of names um, that we know and um, a lot of talented folks out there will be competing. So I'm probably going to go to North Carolina for two nights of wrestling and then, um, yeah, I don't even know how I'm going to survive because it's a four-hour drive back and forth. So oh, quick we'll cry. see. Quick cry. Look, if you do go there, I need you to get me a Juice Robinson t-shirt, okay? Size if, 2X. If I go, I will let the Juice know that you want a shirt and try to hook it up. Yeah, see if he has, like, I don't know, the Tai Chi shirt as well. He probably does it, but I'm just saying. Tai Chi is my joint. Um yeah. This, week, this weekend, uh, I got a busy weekend. Talk about wrestling. There's wrestling literally everywhere this weekend. Um, Friday night, I will be defending my AIWF World Heavyweight title uh, for Mega Championship or Mega Pro Wrestling in Marmette, West Virginia. Uh, Saturday, I will be defending my title, the AIWF title, uh, World Heavyweight title once again. Um, but this time, I will be in pure pro. I will be at Pure Pro Wrestling in Pelham, North Carolina, and then Sunday, I will be defending my World Wrestling Grand Prix title at uh, Firestar. Fire, uh, actually, Firestar Pro Wrestling presents Zone One. Um, it's their monthly taping, their monthly, I guess, TV slash YouTube taping. Um, but I will be defending my World Wrestling Grand Prix title there. So you know, whole bunch of wrestling all over the place so ladies and gentlemen if you can't make it to any one of those you know four four companies which is five shows uh be sure to you know go on social media and check out all the things that's indie wrestling up and down and around the world uh mika before we leave you gotta go out to social media and where they can listen to your beautiful voice when it's not on this podcast Oh my gosh, when I'm not speaking to you, the world still revolves and turns. Amazing, I know. But you guys can find me at Mika Villas on Facebook, on Twitter. I also am on the FOW Radio Network doing a podcast with the uh, FOW Friends of Wrestling. We are on right after this, as a matter of fact. So myself, along with Danny Danger and the old man Patrick, I also have Snapchat. If you are looking to snap me anything inappropriate, 
I'll give you Huckabee Snapchat and let you send it to him instead. But yeah, that's that's all my social media guys. Hit me up. Let's talk some wrestling. Well, as usual, ladies and gentlemen, you can find me on Facebook, William Huckabee, Twitter at WA Huckabee, and on Instagram at William Huckabee. Also, follow this podcast on Facebook, Wrestling Nerdcast, on Twitter at WNerdPod. And, like I said at the beginning of the show, we have a YouTube channel. Yay! Check us out, Wrestling Nerdcast. Check out our first interview live and on location with UIW Heavyweight Champion Adrian Armour. Make sure to like that page. Make sure to subscribe to that page. Make sure to tell your friends. All about the goodness, that is the Wrestling Nerdcast. Anything else, Mika? No, I mean, um, lots of wrestling coming up. I mean, even on the network, there's some mixed match challenge. I might peep at that and see what's happening. Hey, 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 listen, they did some craziness. They put Paige and and Woods together. I mean, that alone is comedic value. That's so. that's that might be worth the price of the show alone. Exactly. Uh, I'm only I'm only watching. I'm I'm kind of disappointed that they don't have Ariel, you know, teaming up with Cedric. But I can deal with you know uh, Enzo Mori and Nia Jax only because of Nia. Like I could deal with those two. Um, <laughs> but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, with that being said, that is the show tonight. Be sure once again. To check out our incredible sponsors, Indie Customs, check them out on Facebook, Indie Customs, and Twitter, at Indie Customs. Be sure to like their page. Be sure to also go and check out Pro Wrestling World on Facebook. Those are our friends. Those are our homies. They support this podcast, which means they support Indie Professional Wrestling. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, this is your host... The AIWF World Heavyweight Champion, the AIWF Mega Heavyweight Champion, the IWA North Carolina Champion, the World Wrestling Grand Prix Champion, the Mid-Atlantic Bully, the Morning Star, the Incredible Huck. And on behalf of my co-hosts, the lover of waffles, the voice of the speech impediment, the idolater of affection, Mrs. Hashtag What That Mouth Do, one half of the world's cutest commentary team, and... Also a co-host on FOW Wrestling, seen on or listened to every week on Podbean, my homie Mika Villas. For our producer, the one, the only, C.W. Smith, we're saying thank you for listening to the show. Support indie wrestling. Westside. Bye. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Hope you liked Just go ahead and hit that like button as well as subscribe to this channel. While you're at it, go to Facebook. Make sure you're following us there. Wrestling Nerdcast on Facebook. On Twitter, yeah, we tweet. W Nerdpod as well. And while you're out there in that social media land, make sure that you're supporting our sponsor, Indie Customs. Indie Customs does bulk as well as individual orders for anything and everything that you need, not just wrestling related. See them for hats, t-shirts, bandanas, you name it, Indie Customs can do it for you. So, until next time guys, keep supporting Indie Wrestling. Bye-bye.